So, an update on Cousin Eddie, the uh, transmission saga. And it's kind of turned into a saga, to be honest with you. But I'm doing my best to remain patient. So when, so when I had the issue, I took it to my mechanic, my family connection, and um, he said it will be a few days before he could look at it, but you know, he's glad to see what he can do. And I was like, no big deal because I gotta go out of town anyways, so there's no great big rush, and I can get home, I'm not in the middle of nowhere, not a problem. So it took him a little longer to get to it than he thought, and, and then the problem came is he couldn't get it up on the lift. He couldn't lift it. So he thought he knew another guy at a garage that he could take it over and get it on the lift, and all that didn't work out. So basically, we got stuck at an impasse, and he, and he suggested a couple places to go. Um, he tends to uh, want to make sure that my RV's in good shape when I'm out there, so he was recommended one of those Jasper places and if you know anything about Jasper and transmissions they have a good reputation but they're really expensive what they do is they will guarantee you three years hundred thousand miles on the work and you pay a lot of money for that which was like thirty three to thirty five hundred dollars worst case scenario so I was like yeah I'm not real thrilled about that I have a uh, family member who lives in the area and he's got a lot of buddies that have businesses and fleets of trucks and all that kind of yada yada stuff so he said well let me check with some of these guys and see what they're saying so that's I'm in the car right now and um, Eddie's being towed to one of those such places that got a good review I spoke to him on the phone um, they can do the work they're a transmission shop that's what they do and they have a lift that can lift it and they told me, worst case scenario, two grand, you know, sight unseen, so it is what it is, and a one year warranty on the work. So we're going down there and gonna see where we're at. I'm glad I've stayed patient through this. I, I would obviously, it's dragged on longer than I needed it and wanted it to, but I wasn't in a huge rush. And I'm okay with that, you know. Patience is sometimes a good thing to have if you're not pressed for time. If I had been broken down somewhere and needed the work done, I'd have lost my damn mind by now. But I wasn't in that situation. So, I have some more thoughts, but I'm gonna take a break and uh, saddle those thoughts up and then do a little bit more in the video. Chickens, poor chickens. Oh, those are turkeys. Poor big turkeys. All right, so, so I wanted to continue on. The purpose of why I'm making this video, which has turned into a series of videos, is um, RVing's not all sunsets and burgers, you know? Stuff happens, bad stuff sometimes. And I'm just trying to convey onto that that maybe I'm getting lucky that I'm staying relatively calm about it, but, um, this too shall pass, things work out, stuff gets fixed. That's the premise of these videos. So, it's taken me a few years, but I guess the one thought I wanna convey is, um, when things go wrong, it basically comes down to the only thing you can control is yourself and like your attitude. You know, throwing stuff, whining and crying, it's not gonna help you. There are always solutions. Some of them are cheap. You fix with a paper clip, and some of them are expensive. And they're gonna be what they're gonna be. Um, I do feel fortunate that I had somebody that tried to help me out. It was just not something they could do. And I am uh, hopeful that the recommendations I've been given on the shop we're going to now to get the work actually done are good. And I trust I trust my uncle and I trust his friends and they recommend the place so it is what it is. All you do is control what you can control. All you can do. Deep breath. You can do that whole count thing, whatever you want it to be. But this is this is the unfun side of uh, RVing. 
a lot of people have always said nice things about Cousin Eddie. I'm real happy with Cousin Eddie. And even with this problem, I'm still happy. I wouldn't change my purchase. Let's just hope, you know, he's good for a while. <laughs> so there'll be more. Well, it looks good and he's still in one piece. All right, so Cousin Eddie's in safe hands. And this place said the tow driver did a really good job. Um, I'm trying. So, uh, this time the hitch didn't scrape the ground. <laughs> Last time getting them off the flatbed, it scraped the ground just a little bit. Um, got a really good vibe from the place, from the people working there. So, uh, they'll get it up on the lift tomorrow and then I'll get a phone call and we'll see what's going on. Keep you apprised. I will decide if this is a video or if the whole thing's a video. But for now, I'm going to say have a great and wonderful day. And uh, Cousin Eddie's on the road to recovery. It is the next day, so I'm going to add this on to the video. My um, exercise and patience will continue. So here's an update. Um, the place I took it to, I got it there at the end of the day, and they called me the next day and said that, hey, we're not going to be like the last place where it sat so long for you, but we can't get to it until we get the vehicle that's on the only lift we have done and off the, off the thing. So it's probably going to be three days, three business days before they can get to it. What are you going to do? You're going to be patient. You're going to work with it. It's fine. So what I'm doing right now is I realized, hey, I never winterized it. So I called them up and I'm running back down there to winterize my RV. I got the, uh, I got my air compressor in the trunk. See? Yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. So, I wish it would have been on there today, getting fixed today, but it's not. And to me, it's not the end of the world. And I haven't really even looked at what I videoed on my ramble on the way down there. So you're going to see a mix of two. Um, I'm not doing these videos in any way to ask anybody for money. I know that it's the internet and there's a lot of people that do that. And I'm not throwing shade at anybody that does that. But that's really not my thing. So I'm just trying to share with you the non-beautiful sunsets and making burgers part of RVing that can happen. Um, I also want to say I've gotten a few um, private messages from people, really nice things, and a lot of the comments were really nice words, but some of the private messages people were asking to send me money. And again, I'm going to say other people do what they want to do. I'm not high and mighty. I don't think I'm better than anybody. But I really don't want to do that. I don't want to ask people for money. Um, I always appreciate when people say something like that because it comes from a good and genuine place. But my answer to that is, if that's something you want to do, I'd rather you take whatever money you think you would send to me and put it under your mattress. Um, save for your own rainy day. Buy a stock, buy a bond, whatever you do with your money. Just, um, I'm a grown man and I'm going to pay my own bills. Now again, that opens you up to a lot of arguments with people on the internet and, and other people think you're, you're criticizing. I'm just talking about where it works for me. So I always appreciate the nice sentiments. Um, I feel lucky that I got a lot of people that not too many think I'm in it for the wrong reasons. So, um, yeah. There's a cop here. Everybody's slowing down. You're going to cut me off. He didn't come get you. So that's my thoughts on that. Um, I'm also trying to show that um, things are going to go wrong. Um, it's going to seem like, wow, that guy doesn't get mad. Trust me, I'm not thrilled about all this. I, I really wish it would have gone a different way but in bad times the only thing you can control is your attitude I've probably said that before um, 
many times things are just totally out of your control. The only thing you can control is yourself and how you react to things. So I would suggest whatever part of life you're dealing with, if you're dealing with RVs, things break. If you own a house, things break. If you're renting, your landlord won't fix things. I mean, there's always things that don't work out the way you want. Yelling and screaming and make a big deal about it isn't going to help you. Oh crap. We're basically stopping on the highway. Yay. Alright, I'm showing patience again. It's going to be a while. Okay. Alright. Right, so it's going to be easy to remember when I winterize this because it's when it's at the uh, shop. I got a tub down there. Drained it in both places. And I'm going to hook up the air compressor. Yep, we're getting it out of there. get the compressor back on it but you understand the process so I've dumped that a couple times I got all the water out satisfied RV antifreeze I got two gallons of it I don't know if there's an exact proper way to do it but I like to do it slow so don't forget the shower drain. And what I'll do, I'll do the bathroom as well, but I'll come back and do these twice. And then obviously wipe that up. So you get the idea. All right, YouTubers, there you go. The RV is winterized, um, waiting its turn on the lift. So since I had the uh, car with me, I unloaded some of the stuff, I cans and jars of stuff that I don't need to get frozen and explode in the pantry so uh, there'll be an update when there's an update I think I have some other videos that might come before that update but part of life and I hope you're having a great and wonderful day